In this episode of Let's Talk Toads, you will learn why the most common source of SCN resistance isn't as powerful as it used to be. In the decade of the 90s and even the 2000s, once a farmer figured out he or she had soybean cyst nematode in their fields, they simply could just grow a resistant soybean variety, just buy a different kind of seed, and uh, everything was good. And that literally was true for a decade or two, but there was a problem kind of percolating or brewing below ground, and that was that those roots of those resistant soybeans all had the same resistance genes. You might have heard of bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics or weeds becoming resistant to herbicides. And it's the same force of nature. It's called selection. And lo and behold, after two decades, we now know that the nematodes in the fields can reproduce pretty well on those resistant soybeans that farmers had been growing. We now know that PI88788 resistance is not as effective as it used to be. But it's so common in the marketplace, we can't abandon it. We'd have to stop growing soybeans if we didn't grow soybeans that had PI88788 resistance. Not every 88788 variety, the common type of resistance, controls the nematode equally, nor do they yield equally as well. Among the varieties with PI88788 resistance, they should search out data if they can find it that shows which are the best yielding, but equally important, which have the best nematode control. So a farmer should look for good 88788 varieties that have high yields and low nematode reproduction and peaking resistant varieties, but certainly then work in non-host crops like corn, oats, alfalfa, sunflowers into the rotation as well, and then their seed treatments to add to the mix. And so it requires an integrated approach of using multiple things to control soybean cyst nematode now, where 25 years ago it was just test your field and pick a resistant variety and you were good. Effective SCN management starts by knowing your number. 